Hello and welcome. Today we're going to explore how insertion sort works using the example array 6, 12, 4, 44, 35, 22. This sorting method is like organizing playing cards in your hands, one card at a time. Let's see how it plays out with numbers. In insertion sort, we start by assuming that the first element alone is already sorted. So, in our array, the number 6 is considered sorted. Iteration 1 involves the second element, 12. We compare it with the previous elements. Since 12 is greater than 6 and there are no more elements to compare to, we leave 12 in its position. Now both 6 and 12 are sorted. Let's move to the next number. Iteration 2 brings us to the number 4. We compare 4 to the elements on its left. First, we compare 4 with 12. Since 4 is less than 12, we move 12 one position to the right. Next, we compare 4 with 6. 4 is also less than 6, so we move 6 to the right as well. 4 is now the first element. Our array looks like this. 4. 6 a child or 12. 44. 35. 22. Iteration 3. We look at 44. It's compared with the previous element, 12. Since 44 is greater than 12, it remains in place. Easy, right? Iteration 4 is a bit more interesting with the number 35. We first compare 35 with 44. Since 35 is less, we move 44 to the right. Then, we compare 35 with 12. Since 35 is greater, it finds its new home right between 12 and 44. Our updated array now reads 4, 6, 12, 35, 44, 22. The final iteration involves the number 22. We start by comparing 22 with 44. It's less, so 44 moves right. Next, 22 is compared with 35. Again, it's less, so 35 moves right. Comparing 22 with 12 shows that 22 is greater, so 22 slides right into the space between 12 and 35. And that completes our sorting. The array is now fully sorted as 4, 6, 12, 22, 35, 44. Now that we understand how insertion sort works, let's dive into its efficiency. We'll discuss the time complexity of insertion sort in the best, worst, and average case scenarios. Time complexity gives us an idea of the time it takes for an algorithm to run as a function of the input size, typically denoted as n. Let's see how this plays out with insertion sort. In the best case, our array is already sorted. Each new element only needs a single comparison to verify its position. This means for n elements, we just do n minus 1 comparisons and no shifts. This brings us to a time complexity of big O of n, and means our time grows linearly with the input size. The worst case occurs when the array is sorted in reverse. Every element from the unsorted part needs to be inserted at the beginning of the sorted list, causing maximum shifts. The operations required roughly add up to n into n minus 1 divided by 2, leading to a time complexity of order of n squared. This implies the time needed grows quadratically with the input size. For a randomly ordered array, the average scenario usually requires shifting half the sorted elements for each insertion, maintaining a quadratic growth in time complexity, hence order of n squared. To sum up, insertion sort is efficient on small or nearly sorted data sets, but gets slower as the data size or disorder increases. Great, now that we've dissected the time complexity of insertion sort, let's explore another crucial aspect, space complexity. This tells us how much additional memory the algorithm needs as the size of the input grows. Insertion sort is interesting because no matter what the input looks like, its space usage doesn't change much. Let's break it down. Unlike some other sorting algorithms that require additional arrays or data structures, insertion sort is an in-place sorting algorithm. This means it rearranges the numbers within the original array without needing additional space apart from a few temporary variables. Specifically, insertion sort typically uses a single extra space for the element currently being sorted and a couple of counters. Hence, regardless of the best case, worst case, or average case scenario, the space complexity remains constant. And that's all about the space complexity of insertion sort. If you have any questions or if there's another topic you'd like us to cover, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell icon for notifications on our latest videos. Thanks for watching.